The universe is the mysterious creation of a vast intelligence. The origin of the world and life is beyond human understanding. The Vedas describe how consciousness is transformed into energy and matter. This process of creation and becoming is going on today, right now. This is not a theory or a religious doctrine. With these keys of understanding, you can see it for yourself. Namaste. So earlier in this series, we talked about the creation of the universe in terms of the 36 tattvas. Well, some people say there are 25, and some say 24, and some others say different other numbers. But it really doesn't matter exactly how you divide them up, because the tendency, the whole process of creation, is from subtle to gross, from high to low. So within that, you can analyze the stages differently. Huh? For example, Buddha analyzed them in Paticca Samuppada. Shankya Yoga analyzes them in terms of the tattvas. And different other schools analyze them differently. But this is the same principle. Okay, We're after principles, not so much getting caught up in the details and arguing whether there are, you know, this many tattvas or that many tattvas. That's for stupid people. <laughs> We're trying to see the top level view, the overall view of the process of creation. Why? Well, it makes a difference in the evolution of speech. And as you may recall from previous series, if you don't have terminology for something in your speech, in your language, in your background ontology, it's very difficult for you to be conscious of it. So let's take a look at the evolution of speech and see specifically how it comes from the beginning. What is the beginning? <laughs> in the previous series, we went over the creation and we talked about how Parashiva is the origin of everything. And Parashakti is his dynamic energy. So Parashiva creates something called the Karana Bindu. Karana means cause. And this is known as Sita. Whereas Parashakti creates the Karya Bindu. Karya means effect. And that creates the Shona Bindu. So these two white and red Bindus then combine to form the Nada Bindu. Nada means sound. And this original sound of these three Bindu together are, is called Kamakala. Now Kamakala is the root mantra, mula mantra, or seed mantra, bija mantra, ing. Ying is the root of all mantras. All mantras are derived from that. And this is called Pashyanti Shabda. Pashyanti Shabda is the most subtle form of vak or speech. So this from this tree bindu, from this Kamakala, evolves a subtle form of speech called Madhyama. Madhyama Shabda is also the Matrika or the Sanskrit alphabet. And from that, Vaikari Shabda or gross speech develops. And these are the syllables, the letters of the alphabet, the syllables formed from them, the words formed from those, and the sentences formed from words. Now, where this uh, shows up on our analysis of human consciousness into four levels, the Chatur Darshanam, 
you're all very, should be very familiar with this chart by now, is that Ajatavada, the highest level of human consciousness, that is Jnana Yoga and realization of Brahman, or in the Buddha's language, the end of suffering. The kind of vak or speech connected with Ajatavada is called para. Para means supreme, transcendent speech, para vak. Then in the Vivartavada, which is the uh, Raja Yoga, and at the level of being of the Ishwara, the creator, and in Buddhist concept, the path to the end of suffering. It is called Pashyanti Vak. Pashyanti Vak is still subtle, and we'll describe these in detail in the rest of the video. And then in the Vishishtadvaita Vada level, with the Bhakti Yoga, the level of being, being experienced is the Kutastha, super soul level. And this is the noble truth where one becomes aware of the cause of suffering. And that level of speech is called Madhyama, meaning in the middle. Still subtle, but the, be the beginning of differentiation has occurred. And finally, in Dvaitavada, which is where most pious people are, they're performing Karma Yoga, and their level of being or consciousness is the Jiva, the body, the embodied soul. And that noble truth is the noble truth of suffering. And that level of vak or speech is vaikari, or gross, audible speech. So these four levels of speech are also the levels of mantra. And as the creation proceeds from subtle to gross, the sound vibration, the original sound vibration coming from Parashiva and Parashakti, then goes through these four stages of evolution. The supreme divine energy is Parashiva. And then he emits or emanates the Parashakti. In the interaction between them, the universe appears or seems to be. Huh? So what is a sound anyway? What is a speech? A sound is defined as a periodic alternation between compression and rarefaction of a medium. The medium could be air, usually is air for us, but it can also be water, it can also be earth, fire, or even ether, space. In fact, akasha, or space, is the tattva that conducts sound. But on that level, the sound is on, in the form of light vibrations. And light is very special because, for, from the viewpoint of light, because it travels at the speed of light, it's eternal. Because it travels at the speed of light, it experiences time compression. And so for light, everything happens all at once. That means on the level of light, the speech is also eternal. But it's very subtle. It's undifferentiated. You can't tell one letter from another, one word from another. Uh, there, there's no differentiation. It's just a single sound, which is denoted by Aum. Okay, of course, this sound has three letters. And in the next stage, the, uh, after this, this is the para stage, the supreme stage, the pashyanti stage, then the letters of aum, a, u, and m, begin to be differentiated from one another. And then in the next stage, because why? Because there are questions and answers. And the highest scriptures are on this level, the tantras, the discussions between Shiva and Shakti. She is asking Shiva about the world. 
And he is replying. He's telling her, this is the way it is, right? And then she goes and creates it like that. Next is Madhyama. The Madhyama stage. Now the sound has become differentiated, but still subtle. In other words, it's still not words, but it's sounds. You know, every, every baby, if you've ever been around a young baby, in the beginning, they, all they can pronounce are the vowels. <laughs> Babies are good at that one. So the baby is developing speech in the same sequence as the evolution of language during the creation. See, this is the, the uh, hermetic principle that as the whole universe goes through this process of evolution, so every being, especially human beings, because they're a complete reflection of the whole, so every human being goes through this process of development of speech. And you can read about this in books on developmental psychology and, and like that. But the point is here that we all develop our own language as we go through the stages of growing up. And then finally, in the Vaikari stage, the Vaikari stage means the letters, words, and sentences start to form meanings. Uh, in, the, in the previous stage, the meaning and the sound vibration are identical. But in the Vaikari stage, because it's in the Dvaitavada level of consciousness, then the meaning becomes separate from the word, although it still is connected. Huh? But still, the, the meaning is separate from the word. And that's why it's possible to have misunderstood terms in ordinary language that is passed by sound vibration in air. The more subtle uh, stages like Madhyama are passed in ether or even earth or water in the body. So these stages, the sound is much more subtle and the sound and the meaning are one. Let's see how that goes. The para level of sound is called Shabda Brahman. Shabda Brahman means the sound of the supreme, the supreme sound. And it's symbolized by Aum, but it's not exactly Aum. <laughs> it's hard to describe because, like I said, at this level, the sound vibration is light. The light is traveling in the ether. And this is the basis of the science of astrology, Jyotish. Jyoti means light, and Isha means the controller. So light is the controller. Light is how God controls the universe. And if you study Jyotish of any, of any depth at all, you'll come to see how that's absolutely true. So this Nama, this level of Nama or sound, Shabda, refers to the unmanifest Brahman. Now, these are all Namas in the Lalita Sahasranam. And in fact, I'm taking this explanation from the commentary on those Namas. So the absolute form of speech is called Paravach. Paravach means the supreme for the supreme speech, the, the holy word. Huh? No, not the Bible. <laughs> the Bible is far away from understanding any of this. But in the Vedic and Buddhist uh, philosophy, this is well understood, that there is a transcendental word. And from that word, the vibration, huh? the alternation of compression and rarefaction of the medium, whichever medium it happens to be passing through, then the creation develops. We can use the example of a seed. When the seed is latent, uh, when it's just a seed, like a bean, huh? then 
This is like pravach. Pravach means there's no manifestation. So it's like a seed. But when that seed germinates, then that's the next stage, pashyanti. Pashyanti means that the seed has sprouted and there comes a little shoot, huh? searching for the light. <laughs> and the uh, little green thread begins to manifest. Now this is when sound is traveling through fire. So the Big Bang, or as we see in our local solar system, the sun also uh, has sound vibrations and they are passing through fire. They're passing through this ionized gas, uh, which is the fourth stage of matter. And because it's very subtle, it doesn't produce any manifestation. But then later on, when it develops to the stage of Madhyama, then the manifestation, the differentiation begins to develop. In the case of the seed, it's when the first leaves start to come out. You, you ever seen a seed germinate and then the first two leaves come out? This is duality. So although the stage of Shabda at Madhyama is still is starting to differentiate it's still one it's still not producing any manifestation that happens only in the final stage of vikari stage uh, and that's like when the when the seed grows up and develops leaves and flowers and it becomes recognizable oh that's that kind of a plant very hard to tell them apart when they're just sprouts but once they grow up and develop then easily we can tell one from another. So it's the same thing with the sound. When the sound is manifest in the form of letters and words and sentences, then we can say, oh, this is the meaning. We can identify it and say, oh, okay, like that. It becomes fully manifest. As the sound vibration passes through more and more grosser mediums, then it becomes more and more manifest more and more duality comes in and finally it's completely manifest as speech and then that means we have to have an alphabet to express that speech so here we are finally after this long detour into well it's not really a detour <laughs> into the process of creation or emanation of the universe we're finally at the point where we can start to explain the matrika. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.